Hi everyone, how's it going? Well, today I'm going to give you a quick review about what I would take to a wildlife safari. Well, let's start with the lens first. Um, this is my most used lens. 300 mm 2.8 VR. The reason why I would use this lens is because it can isolate the background superbly. Since it's 2.8, it can suck a lot of light and you will need light especially when you are picturing animals because they move constantly and usually you want to freeze the action. So 2.8 is definitely my first choice. And because of its price, of course, um, 400 mm 2.8 is way over my budget. It's almost twice more expensive in comparison to this one. And here, 1.7 extender. I would use this extender to convert my 300 millimeters to 500 4.8 and usually when I use it at 5.6 I would get really really good results that I'm really satisfied with and I've taken some really nice images with it so far I would definitely recommend it and do not think that you're going to use the teleconverter if the subjects are really really far away let's say the subject is like uh, 20 or 30 meters far away, you're not going to get good images with this, especially if the subject is small like a bird. Um, but when the subject is in a close range, which I would always recommend that whenever you picture with a lens like this, um, wait for the moment that your subject is really close to you. And you will see that the background is just going to melt down to nothing and you will have an almost 3D-like image, you will be always satisfied and that will really make you stand out from the crowd. So 1.7 is highly recommended that converts at 300 millimeters to 500 millimeters. Very reasonable if you think like this is like having two lenses or having like a zoom lens, 300 to 500. Makes sense. The other lens that I used is a little bit um, extraordinary. Well, I used an 85mm 1.4G. Normally, this is the best portrait or best bokeh lens, as they call it. Um, so, I have not seen anybody using this in wildlife. Probably some people have, but um, I haven't encountered anybody using 85mm 1.4 in wildlife photography yet. Anyway, I tried it, and the subject has to be in real, real, real close range. I'm talking about like one meter. So if the subject is one meter away from you, this lens is going to give you perfect images. However, I would definitely recommend a 70 to 200 2.8 BR over this lens uh, in wildlife photography because it's a zoom lens and 200 2.8 is going to isolate the background better in comparison to this in more distances. Say if the subject is like 2 or 3 meters away, uh, 200 2.8 is going to isolate the subject better and plus you have more focal range. Um, so that would be definitely my um, second choice, but I have 85 1.4 and I'm not really on the lookout for a 70 to 200 because it's too heavy um, and I like the 1.4 images, especially in portraits, better. I took two cameras with me and I always recommend taking two bodies with you. Uh, when you spend lots of money on a wildlife safari, you have to have at least two bodies with you because you know that cameras can fail. You do not want that. So this is one of the bodies that I used in wildlife safari and actually I recently bought this D3 and I would highly recommend this camera. I know it's a bit outdated, but this is a professional full format body with 12 megapixels and autofocusing, the frame rate is superb for wildlife photography. I'm very satisfied with it. If I would ask one more thing from D3, it would be more megapixels. Well, this is 12 megapixels. When you crop the images, and usually you need to crop the images in wildlife photography, 
uh, you will be left with, uh, let's say, 8 megapixels. You can still print large with 8 megapixels, that is still very okay. However, um, it would be so nice to know that you can crop as much as you can. So the camera that is recording right now is a D610. And as you know, it's double the megapixels in comparison to a D3. So you can crop much more in comparison. Of course, it's slower. The frame rate is slower in comparison to D3. However, I really need to say I was really satisfied with the performance of D610. So with so many megapixels, you can crop a lot um, with this camera. So I would definitely recommend it. Another thing I would recommend taking along with you is a dust blower. There's going to be dust all over the place, so having a dust blower is a must. And of course, a lens cleaning cloth is another must, just right along with your um, dust blower. Besides this, of course, don't forget your chargers. And when I'm talking about the chargers, and of course the batteries, you should take enough, enough batteries with you and you should have enough batteries because sometimes you might be out of electricity when you go back in the camp um, electricity might not be there so you might need to have extra batteries that are already charged so it is good to have extra batteries and having them charged um, before there is one battery charger that I have uh, which is charging AA and AAA batteries this charger is a fast charger which is called Maha and it is MHC801D 8 cell battery. If your batteries are totally empty in one hour this is going to charge up to 8 batteries and you will be good to go. Usually it takes like half an hour for me uh, to charge 8 batteries which is super super fast and I'm being satisfied with this um, charger. So since you are going to change the country, probably the plug is going to be different, so make sure you get the right plug for that country. And also I would uh, recommend using multi-plug long cable because you'll be charging lots of things and multi-plug is going to save a lot of time for you. Besides this, I would definitely recommend taking a laptop with you. Having a laptop is going to help you save your pictures and of course when you have a laptop it really makes sense to get a hard disk so we can copy your images from your card to the hard disk and to the laptop and eventually since you are going to shoot lots of pictures when you come back to the camp let's say in between 12 until 3 o'clock when you are not doing wildlife safari you should just get your pictures on the laptop or on the hard disk whatever and recheck them and take a look at your pictures and choose the best ones and delete the ones that you will not need when you shoot like 11 frames per second the images are going to be kind of similar to each other and there's going to be one um, best image so keep that one delete the rest once you come back home you will be very happy to have as less images as you can because uh, there's going to be thousands of images you need to deal with, which is going to be a nightmare. Besides this, there's this thing that I would recommend to every photographer that is photographing from a vehicle. Um, that's a beanbag. Um, the brand is called Skimmer Sack, and I can see that the website is called naturescapes.net. I'm very, very satisfied with this. And whenever I shoot from a vehicle, this is the uh, thing that I will need the most. I do not need a tripod. Tripod is not going to be helpful when you're shooting from a vehicle. Um, you can move this in and out everywhere. And as this is called a bean bag, actually you do not have to uh, fill this in with beans. You can actually use the clothes that you're um, not using. So let's say you have a jacket, you can just, you know, open up the zipper in here and put your jacket in. And you should fill this up totally. I just put one jacket right now, it's not totally full. But it kind of looks like this when you fill it up. And it's got this, you know, rubber back. So once you put it in the position, um, this is going to 
be very, very stable. And if you want to make it even more stable, it's got this Velcro attachment, so you can just attach it to your car. And this is something that um, you can't shoot without. So I highly recommend this. Of course, you will need cards, compact flash cards or SD cards, whatever. Uh, I recommend you to take as much as you can. And I usually recommend using in small gigabytes, like these ones in here. These are four gigabytes each. So imagine if you lose one of them, you're not losing all of your pictures. I find this to be so much more safer in comparison to taking a 32 gigabytes um, card. Another thing that I would recommend taking along is actually a monopod. Well, um, the situation that I would use a monopod is mostly if I'm videoing something instead of taking pictures. One of the most important things in videography is the sound, the sound quality. So since your camera is going to pick up lots of sounds and usually the lenses that you have if they have VR function, uh, there's going to be lots of sound that you don't want to pick up. So what you do is, um, well, I'm recording my voice with this voice recorder. It's called Zoom H2N. Um, that's the one that I'm using at the moment. And it has a thread that will attach on top of a monopod. So if you just put it on the monopod, you can just, you know, make it longer and bring it closer to your subject. So this is going to isolate the mm, engine sound if your vehicle is on and it's going to be closer to the subject. So it's going to be a more direct sound that you're recording. And plus, if you're having a little camera like GoPro, you can have lots of good angles with this. So a monopod is going to be very useful. You live just off Um, once we are talking about the sound, I would highly recommend using a windshield like this. You attach this on top of this um, recorder and since there is going to be wind, since you are shooting outdoors, um, there is going to be wind um, coming up and it's going to make, you know, this gross sound in your microphone. So in order to prevent this, you just put this on top of it and you're going to have way, way, way better sound. Um, this is from Red Hat. I think this is called Red Hat Windshield and you can get it online. Usually it's in red color, that's why it's called the Red Hat. So you will have lots of things like batteries, cards, battery chargers, USB cables, hard disks, this and that. So this is the best thing to take along since it has lots of pockets, you can fill this in. So when you wake up before the sun rises, you do not want to fiddle with lots of things. You just want to take your jacket, your lenses and your cameras and you should be good to go. So that's why a photo vest is going to be very, very useful. So I would highly recommend taking a photo vest with you that's going to save lots of time for you. Well, it's as important as taking your photo gear to take something like this so that whenever you need to pee, um, this is going to be your best helper. This is going to be your best friend. So instead of going to the nearest toilet or all the way down to your camp, this is the best solution in a safari because usually you cannot leave your vehicle so from my experience, um, I need to say, take as less as you can. Do not try to bring all your gear out. Just take the ones that you will need the most. And definitely take two camera bodies, as I mentioned earlier. And make sure you copy your pictures to your laptop and to your hard disk. Because after spending so much money on a wide life safari, you don't want to be coming back with no pictures your trip will be kind of meaningless without that. Um, so this is it everyone. Thank you for watching. 
and stay tuned please subscribe comment like my videos that is going to motivate me that is actually motivating me thank you very much um, for subscribing so far and please share comment and you can also ask me questions or send me some requests for the videos if you're interested in uh, one particular subject I'll be happy to you know make a video for you guys anyway so stay tuned